Hello everyone, welcome back to another topic of RNA biology. So we were learning about the importance of RNA modifications that is uh, essential for the survival of the RNA, stability of the RNA and pushing this RNA into a translation function. And many a times that is essential and many a times it can overdo uh, than what is required and can lead to complications. So now let us understand the importance of and the mechanism of protein translation itself. We all know the workforce in the cell are proteins. No cell can survive without active participation of several proteins. So on an average around 7000 genes contribute uh, for the housekeeping functions of a given cell. Housekeeping functions means those functions that is performed in every cell and a bunch of few thousands of genes will do the tissue specific function means liver will do liver specific function, kidney will do kidney specific function, brain will do brain specific function, spleen will do spleen specific functions and this is regulated via the tissue specific transcription factors. And we usually uh, classify the transcription factors into two broad category. One is general transcription factors and the other category is the specific or tissue specific transcription factors. So general transcription factors are mainly taking care of the transcription function. They are the workforce, they are the uh, workers that will produce RNA from the DNA. Whereas specific transcription factors are those which will guide the system, the guide the cell to where to start the transcription, which all genes to be transcribed in this given tissue and how long this should continue. Should, I, should it continue forever or should it be done only for a specific window? So this is what normally done by uh, specific transcription factors. No matter general or specific these are all proteins. So proteins act as transcription factors, enzymes, structural proteins etc. So even to produce RNA you need proteins and this RNA many mRNAs will give rise to proteins. So let us understand the mechanism of protein translation. So there are three roles of RNA in the translation. We have kind of discussed that the uh, three roles in the previous classes ever since this course began. So the protein translation by ribosomes require three types of RNA. First one is the mRNA or the messenger RNA which contains the message from the genome for a specific gene into the cytoplasm. We call it as mRNA. And this specifies the amino acid sequence of the protein that is going to be made from this RNA. So each amino acid is selected based on the order of triplet codons in the mRNA. Like each amino acid require or the each incorporation of the amino acid require three bases and we call it as a codon rather triplet codon. And then the transfer RNA. Transfer RNA brings in individual amino acids. So total 64 codons are possible in a, um, uh, in a four, base, four base system like we have four bases in an RNA A, U, G and C. So what the process of translation means it converts the formation of in the mRNA to codons into amino acid sequence of the protein. Say if you have 300 codons in a mRNA, it will give rise to 300 amino acid. 300 codon means 900 bases, 300 into 3. So you end up getting a 900 base. I'm talking about the start codon to stop codon. And this 900 base can potentially add 300 amino acids. So that is the concept into amino acid sequence of the protein. So tRNAs carry amino acids specified by the codons and base pair 
with the codons via their anticodons. So, anticodons is another three base which is complementary to the codon. So, anticodon is present on the tRNA. The codons are present on the mRNA. So, the anticodons and codons pair and that will deliver one amino acid. So, just like if you send a letter uh, with an address, the postman will do the matching. He will read the address on the letter and he also read the address what is uh, of your house and then deliver the letter. This is somewhat similar how a anticodon and codon pair and the amino acid delivery in the site of protein synthesis. So, the ribosomal RNA that is RRNA uh, that will constitute the bulk of the ribosome. Although ribosome is a RNA plus protein complex, the ribosomal RNA does lot of the catalytic role. So, one RNA species that is the 20S, 20S ribosomal RNA is a ribozyme. We have learned a lot about that ribozyme that catalyzes the reaction in which the peptide bond is formed. So, remember the 28S ribosome which is a ribozyme is the one which is contributing to the formation of the so called peptide bond. Peptide bond is the bond between two amino acid. Amino acid A, amino acid B, amino acid C they are paired together between A and B there is a peptide bond between B and C there is another peptide bond. So, like that it continues. So, you can see here this red color one is the mRNA and it has got codon 1, codon 2, codon 3, codon 4, codon 5, codon 6, codon 7. Each one corresponds to amino acid 1, amino acid 2, amino acid 3, amino acid 4 and you can see here the each of the tRNA when it is done using because it entered through the uh, you know A site and the peptide bond is formed in the P site and it is eliminated through the exit site E site. So, this is a removed a tRNA, this is the ribosome two bubbles and you can see the middle one where the peptide bond is actually formed that is the one which is having the growing amino acid chain. So, in this codon one initially this ribosomes were here and it had the first amino acid then second then third then fourth. So, corresponding to the fifth one this tRNA has brought in the fifth one and at here corresponding to the fifth codon you have this tRNA and the sixth one and seventh one is arriving. So, this will continue until the total number of codons are completed. So, that is the basic principle of the protein translation. So, let us see the genetic code. We have seen this uh, picture earlier also. So, total possible codons are 64. The codons for 20 standard amino acids are specified by triplets of bases known as the genetic code and we have discussed about this earlier also and Hargobind Khurana is one of the uh, Indian origin scientists who was contributing uh, contributed significantly uh, to the discovery of genetic code and he was awarded Nobel Prize. So, because there are four bases and you group them into three, four raised to three is equal to 64 basically mean four into four into four possibilities are there. So, total 64 possible combinations of triplet codons are possible and most amino acids are specified by more than one codon and we refer to this phenomenon as degeneracy or we call it as degenerate codon. So, what it, does it mean? One amino acid because there are only 20 amino acids. We do not have 64 amino acids to have identity. So, what it happens? One amino acids can have starting from one to six some amino acids can have say one codon some have two codon some have four codon some have six codon so this is the range based on which amino acid you are talking about only 61 codons are meant for uh, bringing in amino acid whereas three of them act as the stop codon uaa uag uga so these are the stop codons so three do not bring in any amino acids and we call them as termination codons or stop codons. The termination codons tell the ribosome where to end the translation of the mRNA. Most commonly AUG codon is the starting codon and it specifies methionine and there is no second codon available for methionine. So, methionine has got only one codon 
and that is AUG and that is the start codon for every protein serves as the start codon that is AUG serves as the start codon and tells the ribosome where to begin the translation process. Few deviations from the standard genetic code have been found providing strong evidence that life on earth evolved only once because a lot of organisms starting from virus to human virus bacteria fungus human everywhere the codons are constant and same codon brings in same amino acid you can never find a given codon bringing in another amino acid so this is one of the strongest support to believe that the life originated only once because if it was originated multiple times it is impossible to have the same codon present in all the attempts because there is no reason there is no rule to be followed that this amino acid has to be brought in with only with this codon at least you should have had a variation in the codon and even you don't see that so this is another way of presenting so one table is here you have got the first position base second position base and the third position base that means first position u and the second position is uh, u and the third is u so here you will say u u u like that so these are the uh, short forms of amino acid phi stands for phenylalanine leu stands for leucine and uh, ile stands for isoleucine and thr stands for threonine like that so uh, the names of amino acids are not important uh, at this uh, moment but understand 20 different types of amino acids are there another way of presenting uh, the genetic code is this way this is the first one second one and the third one so g c g one codon g c a another codon g c c another codon g c u another codon they all bring in alanine and like that you can go valine arginine serine like that so for arginine you have a g g a g a arginine but arginine can have elsewhere also see here also you have c g g arginine c g a arginine c g c arginine c g u arginine so arginine have got four here two here so total six arginine has so only methionine and tryptophan two amino acids have got only one codon rest all of them have at least two codons are there so we should also understand in bacteria plants and mammals or um, the the animals plants bacteria plants prefer a certain set of codons but they follow the same rule certain set means those codons ending with a or u is preferred whereas in animals the codons ending with ending means the third base codon what i mean is a b c three bases are there ending with g or c is preferred this doesn't mean that plants don't have a codon ending with the g or c is missing or this also doesn't mean that animals don't have codons ending with a or u both are there we are talking about preference like say for example if arginine have got a codon a g g this is preferred compared to a g a because it is ending with a something like that you can see c g g is preferred c g a is less preferred or c g c is preferred c g u is less preferred in animals so plants it is the other way around or in bacteria but all codons are present all codons are uh, present in all animals there is no codon is missing like of the 61 codon entire 61 codons are represented in all living forms there is no single living form is available which is lacking any one of this codon which is not served by a trna so that is not occurring so you can see methionine asparagine aspartic acid and stop codon so this is an example like you start with methionine and you can have any amino acid don't think that it has to be asparagine or aspartic acid and eventually it will come to a stop codon this is the easiest way of depicting a translation corresponding to these codons aug brings methionine aac brings asparagine gac brings aspartic acid uaa brings a stop codon but keep in mind no mrna will have just 
three codons or three amino acids so that is not a mrna so uh, it will have much more number so now reading of the triplet code so there are three potential reading frames in all rna and because of this because no one says okay this is the first base and this is the second base no there is no way uh, rna have a first base and rna have got a last base but not for the open reading frame or where is the start start also we know aug but there will be several aug who will tell you that which aug you should start so this is always possible and three potential reading frames in all rnas however only one reading frame is used for translation and is it is selected based on the frame in which the aug codon uh, appears and you should also understand in the same rna there may be three or four augs will be there so not that every aug it will start translation even if it starts it will immediately find a stop codon say maximum it will go to around six or seven amino acid it will find a stop codon hence that is not preferred so the right aug when it is starting then it will find a bunch of amino acid and it will reach until the stop codon and the entire protein is translated so the system makes sure that any out of frame uh, reading happens it will not be wasted wasting the resources in the cell by producing unnecessary protein so it will immediately mark for degradation because it simply makes around seven or eight amino acids only so the triplet codons are read in a non overlapping or in a comma less manner so rarely there are mrnas that read in more than one frame likewise the frame shifting is very uncommon say for example like you can see here frame 1 frame 2 and frame 3 are mentioned here so let us say gcu is one frame and ugu another um, codon and so this is one frame starting from gcu so now this gcu is g is not counted whereas cuu is counted that means this c u and u so there is a frame shift and it continues like that c u u g u u like that it is continuing and what is the other frame it is skipping two base like this is g c u g and c is skipped here so u u g that is u u g is taken so u u g u u u a c g a a u u a a like that it is continuing so we can say each frame has the potential to give a polypeptide polypeptide 1 polypeptide 2 polypeptide 3 but in reality the right one is only going to be completing a substantial stretch of amino acid the other frames often end up in a quick stop codon or a very frequent stop codon so let us understand more about the two step process of mrna decoding means protein translation is nothing but mrna decoding so amino acids are attached in ester linkage to the 3 prime terminus of trna forming amino acyl trnas the enzymes that carry out this atp driven reaction are known as amino acyl trna synthetase so trna produced in the nucleus that undergoes the maturation in the cytoplasm and it also gets amino acylated so that this trna gets ready so amino acyl trna synthetases are highly accurate because it cannot randomly catch hold of some uh, amino acid and add on to a given uh, trna because this amino acid must correspond with its anticodon because each trna should have the correct anticodon sequence so that this amino acid will be delivered in the right codon of the mrna during protein synthesis and this is called high fidelity uh, means there is no scope for error if a tryptophan amino acid should be delivered to the trna that contains the anticodon sequence for the tryptophan's codon otherwise the tryptophan will end up elsewhere so you don't want that to happen that is why the high fidelity of the amino acyl trna synthetase are very important and this helps to minimize translation errors in step two that happens in step one step two the amino acids is added to the growing protein chain based on 
codon anti codon interactions that takes place in presence of the ribosome subunit between the mrna and the trna that is what you can see here amino acid trna synthetase catch hold of an amino acid and catch hold of the trna and it creates the linkage of the trna with the amino acid and this trna has to pair in the right place so this high energy ester bond is broken only inside a ribosome where the protein uh, synthesis is taking place or the peptide bond is taking place so the amino acid trna synthetase make sure the charging or the loading of the trna with the amino acid bacteria synthesize around 30 to 40 trnas whereas eukaryotes synthesize around 50 to 100 thus a given amino acid often can be carried by more than one species of trna each amino acid trna synthetase recognize one amino acid and all of its cognate trna say for example let us talk about the amino acid trna synthetase of arginine we know arginine has got six codons so naturally it will have six trnas with the corresponding anticodons so the arginine amino acid trna synthetase can recognize all the six trnas that contains the corresponding anticodon so one amino acid trna synthetase can happily deliver the um, arginine amino acid to all the six different types of trnas uh, corresponding to uh, the codons of this amino acid so now let us look into the structure of trnas trnas are roughly 60 70 to 80 nucleotides in length that is there uh, it is much longer to start with which undergoes maturation splicing etc and they all have a clover leaf secondary structure and fold into an l shaped tertiary structure so secondary structure is clover leaf and tertiary structure is l shaped and four double helical stems occur and three of these have loops of seven to eight residues at their ends and some of this tca modification we discussed in the earlier classes which is a post transcriptional modification every amino acid should have a cca end in the three prime end and one loop that we call it as anticodon loop that is this area anticodon loop pairs with the codon and this contains the anticodon sequence a three base sequence corresponding to the complementary sequence of the codon so the upper stem is known as the acceptor stem and it ends with a cca sequence in all trnas why it is same because all trnas come from different genes and none of them have the cca to start with because it is done by a post transcriptional modifications so all trnas have a three prime end is cca so the amino acid is attached in ester linkage to the two prime or three prime hydroxyl group of an a residue a residue means adenine residue many residues are modified in trna and some modifications are shown as you can see here in below so this modification some of them we have already discussed this is called rna editing that allows uh, with the minimum you can perform maximum that means some modifications are changing into inosin inosin is a neutral base it doesn't it pair uh, equally well with a, all the four bases a g c or u it neither attracts nor repels so in this way some animals will be able to cater more codons with less number of trna diversity or trna diversity is low you can edit this anticodon arm and you can cater those codons also and some of these modifications are providing like pseudo uridine etc and uh, psi loop uh, these modifications protect the uh, trna from uh, some nucleases etc so we should understand that the trna will have a dedicated region that is the anticodon arm and a dedicated region 
for the binding of the amino acid so this binding ensures that the amino acids are strongly attached and they are delivered in the right place and right time to the required targets so we should appreciate the beauty of the protein translation with uh, all its merits going to various enzymes they are specific like amino acid tRNA synthetase that are very specific and also various enzymes that creates the RNA modifications of certain bases and a uh, lot more uh, enzymes come into picture uh, to provide specificity to the protein synthesis. So we will learn more about the protein synthesis in the next class. Thank you.